Ah, la belle France still holds that special allure for the British. Thousands of us still believe the French hold the key to an idyllic lifestyle. Of course, some snails are absolutely delicious. But 39-year-old Monty Walden is a bit different. Je note avec un stylo ce qu'on a pris. He doesn't want to just live in France. He wants to take them on at their own game. He's chucked in his job and cashed in every last penny of his savings in pursuit of a romantic dream. It's a massive, massive risk. And if it goes wrong, then I'll be in big debt. Wine lover Monty is going to get a vineyard, grow some grapes, produce a red wine, and prove to old Frenchie an Englishman can do better. If I can't produce a wine better than this, I might as well pack up and go home and do something else. Monty's moving to the south of France, setting up home and pursuing a sustainable green lifestyle. Really, for kind of minimal expense, I've got the makings of a decent veggie garden. <laughs> but living out his dream will push him to the brink of financial ruin. And some of his ideas risk ridicule. <laughs> Just growing some grapes may seem simple, but really isn't. You know, there's all sorts that can go wrong. Well, that's every wine grower's worst nightmare. They just hoover off the grapes. Fight, you want to fight me? See the wine's back. Down, you Whoa. I think I've just knocked a vine over. At the end of 18 months of blood, sweat and tears, Monty will discover if his big gamble will make him or break him. <laughs> On the flip side, if it works, um, it'll be a real career change for me and um, these guys will make me some money. Monty Walden is a writer with a passion for wine. But having spent years writing about it, he now wants to try and make the stuff. I think this, this is the kind of style of wine I like to drink myself personally. And I think it's important if you're going to make wine, you might as well enjoy what you're making. And uh, I can see myself knocking back a few bottles of this um, when I'm having lunch in the vineyard. Monty plans to make a light, fruity red table wine that he can flog to the Brits back home. He's on a vineyard hunting expedition in a stunning area of southwest France, close to the Spanish border and the Pyrenees. This is known as the French Catalan country, an area of outstanding natural beauty. There are 750,000 acres of vines here, a third of all the grapes in France. But because of recent overproduction, thousands of vineyards are being sold off. Monty thinks he can bag a bargain. Where does the vineyard start and where does it finish? And with some TLC, produce something really special. This one's a bit of a mess, unfortunately. And it seems like um, the guy that's selling it, um, he's kind of let this vineyard go a bit and he hasn't really been paying too much attention. So basically, the, because it's a white soil here, uh, it doesn't heat up so much, and then the night time it cools, so you get hot days, cool nights, and that's very good for aroma and freshness. But he quickly discovers that even in this relatively cheap spot, when the local spot Johnny Foreigner coming, prices rocket. 14,000 euros. Yeah. It's 10,000 pounds. That's expensive, huh? Monty's risking his entire life savings to find the perfect vineyard. But his wish list is testing the agent's patience. It's, uh, it's useless because of, uh, because of this pylon. But why? 
I want the lunar influence to be strong here. I can't do biodynamics with a pylon that's going to interfere with all my lunar cycles. It's impossible. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Organic's not good enough for our Monty. Oh, no. He believes the influences of planetary rhythms and the moon can produce a much better tasting red wine. Biodynamics is harnessing cosmic uh, planetary forces um, into your vineyard, into your plants, to make them receptive to beneficial energies. But there are experts in the wine trade who think he's completely bonkers. Deluded, sad, and very, very, very funny. <laughs> Monty's determined to prove them all wrong. Working strictly to the lunar calendar, his vineyard will be completely green. Instead of chemicals, he'll use herbal sprays and plenty of fresh cow manure. Lovely. If you don't have a good relationship with cows and cow shit, then you're just not biodynamic. And there'll be no modern machinery. And I think um, using biodynamics will make a more intense, uh, more interesting, more complex wine. Monty's search eventually leads him to a small organic vineyard planted just before the Second World War. Bonjour. Bonjour, Eric. Could this be just what Monty's looking for? Seems like a nice place to work. There's no electricity pylons. Um, you've got plenty of trees around you. You've got a nice wind, which stops disease from forming. It's not too steep, but it's steep enough. To, you can only really make quality wine on a steep site. Good exposure to the sun. You get a really complex wine. This vineyard seems perfect. It even has a building that could be renovated. But there's one person he needs approval from. His Italian girlfriend, Silvana. Monty has to persuade Silvana to come and live with him and help out in the vineyard. So I've got a plow from a mule, which has not obviously been used since 1943 when this cabin was built by his, his grandfather. What about well, wire or snakes or something like that? Les sangliers, les serpents. Il y en a très, il y en a, mais très peu. Les sangliers, il y en a, mais des. So there are some wild boars. Les serpents, il y en a pas beaucoup. Yeah, okay, but if I come outside and I see a wild boar just in front of me, what, what can I do? Run. Run. <laughs> if I was a wild boar and I was up against you in that fine <laughs> Italian foot, where I'd fancy my chances. <laughs> oh, mais c'est fabuleux. Oh, I love it. I think it's great. It can be nice, but um, it would take like one year to to clean it and to make it a place where we can be. <laughs> but could be nice, okay, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I think that I don't think we can live here like all year, but we can certainly make it to be a place where you know we can live here for a little bit when we are working here with the donkey, for example, if yeah. we get one. So what about the toilet? I cannot see any place. Mm, there isn't the a toilet. Well, there isn't yeah. a toilet. And? Well, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to dig a hole or something. Um, What's wrong with that? It was bad. Despite the lack of en suite facilities, Monty thinks he's found his dream vineyard. 6,000 Carignan vines. Once, France's most popular grape because of its high yields. At a bottle per vine, Monty's expecting a handsome profit in 18 months' time. Everything about it is right. It's isolated, it's fantastic position, it's got amazing soil, old vines. This is where I want to be. But before he signs his life away, Monty has to head back to London. If he's to sell his wine, he has to convince the giants of the wine trade his biodynamic project is not half-baked. Bill! Oh, Jesus Christ. So this is where we keep our, what is called, duty paid stock. So this is stuff we've already paid the government money for. Meet Bill Baker, top restaurant wine buyer and huge skeptic. Organic wine is still, in the most part, a bit of a con because people are making wine for the sake of making organic wine for the sake of it being organic not for the sake of it being good wine there's a bottle of lafitte 1870 and how much is that worth do you think hello how much is a lafitte 1870 worth 5750 pounds plus that do you get the box with it as well you could have the box if you wanted to give me a check right away <laughs>
Heaven knows how Bill will react to Monty's plan of making wine with the lunar rhythms. And when the moon is descending, <laughs> which is only... Which is only... Descending into what? Uh, well, Fuss? Um, I am very much looking forward to going and seeing uh, the project. I hope we can do some sort of dancing around in the vineyard and stuff, you know, half naked in the middle of the night when the moon's on the rise or something is, anyway. But the oh, idea... Honestly, boy, <laughs> it's completely embarking. <laughs> Monty's not a man to be put off. He heads back to France to sign up for his new adventure. <laughs> so, it's full steam ahead with the vineyard. But his idea of sharing this dream with his Italian girlfriend, Silvana, has hit the buffers. I'm really excited about this project, really excited about what lies ahead. Um, only one slight down is that Silvana's made the decision not to come. She's got a very important job in Italy, very high power. She can't just leave it just like that. So, unfortunately, what that means is I'm going to have to go back to the UK. I'm going to have to advertise um, to find somebody to help me um, because I can't do all of the work on my own. Perhaps surprisingly, 30 candidates for the job have jumped at Monty's advert. I need people that have got their feet on the ground. I don't want any kind of moon, starry eye, moon dreaming, biodynamic kind of Mr. Spiritual, all this kind of stuff. I, I managed to sleep through my alarm clock. I'm living at my folks' place at the moment and I'm turning their garden into, a, into an edible forest garden. After my masters, I went to work with the Sword Association, but also trained as a Steiner teacher. I really love animals and particularly like donkeys. I started off locally doing a few wine classes and sort of gone on from there. I always wanted to be a butcher. <laughs> it sounds daft, but I can have a sensual experience um, running along the, the beach first thing in the morning. The candidates range from biodynamic experts to enthusiasts to complete novices. What's your wine consumption like? I do drink quite a bit of red wine. Is it, is it just red wine that you're dealing with? I mean, if I ask one of your mates what your good points are and your bad points, give me a couple of bad ones. Sometimes I have irrational moods for so many. Um, people probably think I'm quite boring on some levels. But Monty's looking for common sense, a love of the outdoor life, and someone who'll share his dream. But I'm not afraid of hard work, not at all. And I don't mind, you know, licking in and doing whatever. I quite enjoy it. By the end of a frustratingly long day, Monty has to make his choice. Oh. <sighs> These nine, for sure, really shone out. Um, and maybe I'm wrong, but um, why do you want this job? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> um, well, I've uh, I've been through a divorce and I've left my job, and I want to change my life. I just don't know, my gut feeling says, and my gut feeling is normally right. And I would, I would go for, I'd go for Lindsay. So she is who she is, what you see is what you get. Monty likes the idea of working with a blank canvas. <laughs> Lindsay's inexperience means she won't come with any annoying preconceptions. I'm convinced that at the end of this year, she will have proved to herself and to everybody that she could really grapple with a subject that everybody finds complicated. And she'll, she'll have got it, she'll have clicked, she'll have mastered it. Well, it could be life-changing, couldn't it? Monty's found his extra pair of hands, but has he really made the right choice? You know, I could just be on the verge of making an almighty cock up. Monty Walden has packed his bags, left the UK for good, and moved to a stunning part of southwest France to try his hand at winemaking, something he's dreamed of doing for years. Hit the jackpot. I mean, uh, fresh air, sun on my face, amazing views. Couldn't get any better. He signed his life away on a five and a half acre organic vineyard overlooking the Pyrenees. But Monty's going to produce his wine very differently. It's so-called biodynamic, a technique that apparently uses the planetary and lunar influences to enhance the grapes. He last saw the vineyard at the end of summer. 
It's now midwinter, and finally he's got the keys. But it's not long before the reality of his ambitious adventure hits home. Well, when I came here in September to uh, select the vineyard, it was um, obviously the weather was much calmer. It was very still, very tranquil, very peaceful. You know, these fantastic views that you're seduced by. Now that I'm up here in the depths of winter, it's freezing. And uh, because I want to take this vineyard from organic, which is very, very nice, but I want to make it biodynamic. And to make it biodynamic, there's a load of work to do. And I haven't been able to do it, obviously. And I'm going to need a bit of luck, some good weather, and uh, some, some extra help, really. Which is why he's hired a vineyard assistant. 34-year-old divorcee Lindsay Bissett is over the moon at the opportunity Monty's offered her. Sort of dream come true for me anyway, to be able to spend the time that I'll be spending out there. Really, really excited. Can't wait. In fact, it couldn't come quick enough now for me. I just want to get packed and, and gone. Just show us one of the outfits you're taking then. <laughs> I just thought, in case they go out one evening, you never know, do you? Lindsay's expectations of a good time might end up a bit wide of the mark. Lindsay will be living with Monty in the isolated mountain village of Saint Martin de Fenoué. It doesn't get much remoter than this. There's a tiny population of just 40. No shops, no bars, and just one small hotel where Monty's been staying till now. The vineyard is just outside the village. Today, Monty begins the mammoth task of transforming it from organic to biodynamic. Monty has mixed some cow manure with a chamomile and nettle tea for his first biodynamic tonic. When a cow has a shit, OK? What happens? Immediately, all the worms in the field are attracted to the cow fat. So what I'm doing with this spray is I'm making my vineyard attractive for all the worms in the, in the air, and they're going to come into my vineyard and start looking after my soil for me. That's the idea. But this is very labour-intensive, and Monty has to walk miles just to cover the vineyard. You know, it's tough going, especially if you're not used to it. And, uh... You know, I don't think, I hope I haven't bitten off more than I can chew. Yeah, here. Okay. Oh, thank you. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Very well, how are you? All right. How was your trip? Uh, not so bad, thank you. It's a bit tired. How's yours? You all right with that? Monty plans a gruelling schedule, so tomorrow they'll be up at the crack of dawn. <coughs> Next morning in the hotel, Monty had assumed it would be breakfast for two. Uh, no, I think we're going to have to brush up on uh, Lindsay's timekeeping. <laughs> Before they head up to the vineyard, Monty's collecting the keys to their new rented home in the village. But it's not quite the idyllic French country cottage Lindsay had imagined. Oh, microwave, that's very bad, isn't it? Oh, yes. So this is my little stool, eh? No, we're going to have a set, eh, aren't we? Oh, yeah, this is nice. And... <laughs> Monty loves its simplicity. Lindsay, though, likes it a little more comfortable. Well, we haven't got a proper shower, have we, though? It's no, but that's all right. You can just sit in the bath and have a shower. See, so when you bring me my drinks up at night when I'm in the bubble bath... I don't know what planet you're on, Lindsay, but, I mean, you've obviously got off the wrong bus. <laughs> it is small. God, it's tiny. It's small in there. It's fine. It's cosy. You don't waste any water. Don't forget, this is a very dry region. I mean, it's not what I'd want, you know, for myself, but, you know, it's well we're here. What do you expect, the hanging gardens of Babylon? <laughs> It may have no furniture, but at least the three-bedroomed house has plenty of space. And it's only a stone's throw from the vineyard. Today, the only shop makes its weekly appearance. It's the centre of village gossip. 
For the locals, it's a chance to check out the two new arrivals. Bonjour. Um, jambon. Um, and it took just sank. Sank. And it gives Lindsay the opportunity to test out her schoolgirl French. Uh, what pâté do you do? The boar. Ah, we. I just feel a little bit, you know, stuck in the middle of nowhere at the moment. So, but I better get this back to Monday. <laughs> Lunch will be al fresco in the vineyard. Monty has a treat for Lindsay's first day on the job. Spreading organic compost by hand over the entire five and a half acre vineyard. It's hardly what Lindsay had in mind when she signed up to the romantic sounding winemaking adventure. Oh my God. It's you and me and 15 sons of shit. Her last job was in glossy showrooms selling BMWs. <laughs> You're going to go here? Yeah. So right, what I want you to do, is I want you to put compost, like, down here, OK? So like that, then? Yeah, go on, then. What? Yeah. Uh, is right. that enough? That's for... fine, and then we can always rake it over. God, it's not easy, is it's it? It's not easy, no, I knew it's not easy. <sighs> oh, God, I can't even get it back. <laughs> We've got a lot of this to do, and, I, and it's hurting my back already. I mean, you can see the views, and they're just fantastic. It's quite boring. I'm not going to mind too much, because it's really, really nice here. Not only have they got over 6,000 vines to compost, but Monty intends to convert Lindsay to his rather unusual philosophy. What I want you to is really start to feel connected to the vineyard. The more connected you feel, yeah. the more you're going to learn and the more you should... Putting compost on is as much about giving food to the vineyard as giving life to the vineyard as well. Yeah. There's an expression that we have as biodynamic growers, which is the best sound a vine can hear is the sound of the vine grower's feet. And a Birmingham accent. <laughs> I think he thinks I'm a bit of a blonde bimbo at the minute, which, you know, <laughs> he's probably right, but he's a bit um, condescending at times, you know. In fact, Lindsay's got off to a good start. Monty's impressed. But no, she's doing all right. I mean, uh, she's doing a very thorough job, a little bit slow, but it's better to go slowly and well than to go quickly and bugger it up, so. End of day one. And so far, so good. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, we've actually done better than I thought we'd do today. I think I'll be dreaming vines tonight. But life is about to get a whole lot tougher. Next time, Monty suffers a painful back injury at a critical moment. I should have just stayed as a wine writer. <laughs> I just didn't expect to be on a knife edge so early on. That next time is the same time next Thursday. Now, what's the secret to wedded bliss? A pilgrimage to find out in Marriage Technique for Beginners, tomorrow at 7.30 in First Cut. Next tonight, after six years in Tuscany, the Turnbulls are ready to pass on their wisdom to others wishing to make the great Italian escape.